with that coming off a loss to North Alabama before Christmas. Something about a conference opener that just has a great vibe to it. And Ole Miss will control the ball first. Rick Barnes talked about it. These teams know each other when you get to SEC play. There are no secrets between the teams in the league. Shot goes up the fadeaway on the baseline by TJ Caldwell, who's getting the start tonight for Ole Miss. Taking a look at the Tennessee starting lineup. You will not see Josiah Jordan-James in this lineup. We do not expect to see him again tonight for Tennessee. Yeah, he's been in and out. Now back out day to day. No timetable set for his return. On the first possession, a little shuffle cut. Defending late was called well on the play. So Tennessee's an inbound. Tyree Key under the basket. They'll swing it around up top. Kamwa handing it off to Key. Uros Plavcic. Santiago Vescovi. Back to Kamwa. Guarded by Brakefield and then loses it, but out of bounds off of Ole Miss. Volunteers will keep it. Look, Ole Miss isn't a bad defensive team either. No, they're very good as a matter of fact. Neither one of these teams, though, offensively, they can get into so many struggles in offensive quicksand. Key on the inbounds for the balls. Three seconds on that shot clock. Plavcic. Got to shoot. Ran out of time. It's just not good awareness. Rick Barnes wasn't very pleased with that outcome. Yeah, Rick Barnes coming into this one. Brought them back the night of Christmas. Didn't like the practice that they had on Monday, but things did improve coming into this game. He's challenged them with their transition defense and their ball screen coverage. Taking a look at the Ole Miss starting lineup. We mentioned it. T.J. Caldwell getting the start for the first time this season tonight. Yeah. Kermit Davis as we see the offensive foul on Brakefield. Tennessee's defense is so good on the ball. Let me go back to as we take a look at Kermit Davis. He told us that T.J. Caldwell was by far their most competitive guy coming back from Christmas break, so he's rewarding him with the start. And he's had the, bat, the best last three days, just showed a lot of toughness. The freshman out of Dallas, Texas, he was the number 19 shooting guard. They feel like he can play the one and the two starting at the point tonight. Plavcic up off the glass, and it bounces out. McKinnis out with it. Up ahead to Matthew Morell for three, a bit long. And this will be Tennessee ball. You know, Rick Barnes, no surprise that his team is a great defensive and rebounding team. That's kind of his DNA. Yeah, there's no question about it. He, he wants his guys to understand that that part of the game first and let the offense come as the season goes along. One of the things that, to keep up with in this game, who can find easy points? High up off the window goes Santiago Vescovi. What did Rick Barnes tell us about Vescovi? He left him in the game against Austin P. He needed to see the ball go through the net. He was so good offensively in that game making those Five threes. Yeah, five for five. Perfect from behind the arc. The pick throw down by Miles Burns, the transfer from Loyola, New Orleans. That's a rarity. Breaking Tennessee down off the bounce. We talked about easy points. Now the two teams have traded. Key trying to work on TJ Caldwell going to draw the foul. Well, so much for starting because now Caldwell has picked up his second already. That's where Key shows his experience. Just kind of rotated over his right shoulder to attract the foul. What's the biggest thing Tyree Key's brought to Tennessee transferring in from Indiana State? Uh, the experience factor. I mean, again, you, you got to remember that this is a Tennessee team that has added a, a new piece in key. They've added a new piece in Phillips. I talked to Santiago Vescovi uh, last night at practice about the transfer portal and what that means from a player's perspective. Because we, we're so quick to talk about it from a coach's perspective or a broadcaster's perspective. But he talked about, yeah, it's different. There's no question about it. Because not only do you have to work in the freshmen, but you have to work in the new guys as well. 
They've worked them all in quite well on defense. You see where Tennessee stacks up defensively in the nation. And when you watch them, what stands out about their defense? Not getting beat off the bounce individually. So they do not get into defensive rotations. And if you can stay out of defensive rotations, you'll be really good on the defensive end. Jamin Brakefield, the transfer from Duke, over to Deshaun Ruffin, who lets the three fly. Ruffin still trying to get back into game shape, recovering from that injury. Not 100% just yet. Vescovi stepping into the three. There it goes. I just love the quick opposite look by Vescovi, which set up that whole transition opportunity. You know, Olivia Kamwa was asked this week about the offense for Tennessee, and he said, we're taking more rhythm threes. That was one of those that he was talking about, especially for Vescovi. Going back, watch Vescovi look opposite, look early. That rotates the defense. Nobody comes over to pick up Vescovi. That's a wide open look, all because, and the NBA is really good at this, look early, look opposite. Santiago Vescovi spent the summer, actually worked out for a couple of NBA teams, wanted to explore his options, decided it would be better to come back to Tennessee. Vescovi guarded by Morrell. That's a great matchup, isn't it? They're guarding each other on both ends. It's going to stay with Tennessee. And Kermit Davis wanted to push off on the saved ball there. Both of these teams defensively as we take another look. I love the activity by McGinnis to create the havoc. Tennessee knew too, I mean Rick Barnes told us, we're gonna see a lot of different looks. They zoned them a lot in the meeting last year and Tennessee had some problems with it. Turnover, Ole Miss basketball. Right now Ole Miss is man to man, is pretty good. Tennessee down the floor, a little 1-2-2. Two, two. I don't know that it's designed to steal as much as it is just to bother. There's Morrell to the center of the floor, kicks it over to Ruffin. Deshaun Ruffin has come in and taken over the point guard duties. T.J. Caldwell already with two fouls. Got the start today for Ole Miss. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Breakfield in the paint. All around slammed home by McInnes. That's where when you get feet in the paint and attract defenders, weak side rebounding is there. We'll go inside to Kamwa. Rolls around and drops for Olivier Kamwa. Yeah, he's become a more complete player. Remember, his season got cut short last year with that ankle injury in February. One of the challenges for both offenses, get the ball from one side of the floor to the other. Ball reversal. Quick three, it flies from Matthew Morrell. Looks pretty too. Great half court set by the Rebels there to free up their best shooter. Jonas Adu, this one will stay with Tennessee. And we'll step aside. Just a one point game, a one point lead for the Ole Miss Rebels hosting number seven Tennessee in Oxford the series here in Oxford, but only by a game. Ole Miss could tie that up at 27 all with a win today. There's just something about these two teams meeting. Do you know what that tells me? It tells me it's really hard to win on the road. Yeah. <laughs> of course, last year's meeting between these two squads went to overtime. Tennessee trailed by 12 points in that game and then won by six in OT. In fact, they didn't lead until it went to overtime. Zakai Ziegler has entered to run the point for Tennessee. Vescovy in trouble. Two seconds. The fadeaway off the mark. Shot clock violation on Tennessee. This is one of the things that Tennessee gets challenged with at times. When the shot clock is dictating your, the quality of your shot, that's not a good thing. Both teams have been better offensively with early offense because once you get settled on the half court, Finding a good shot is going to be really difficult in this game. Right, Tennessee th three for three within the first 10 seconds of the shot clock today. Ole Miss two for two. Jamin Brakefield working on Kamwa and he's fouled. Well, this is the guy I think that 
maybe holds the key for Ole Miss today in terms of break field because when Ole Miss wins, he's averaging almost 10 points a game. But when they lose, he's only averaging three and a half points a game. That's a pretty telltale sign. It's kind of the theme with Ole Miss. They want that offense, I mean, that consistency right. from the whole team. Specifically, Kermit Davis has talked about a post player stepping up. He hasn't seen one do that on either end of the floor just yet. It just makes life so miserable when you kind of struggle on the offensive end. For Ole Miss this year, you know, free throw percentage ninth in the league, three point percentage 12th in the league. It's hard to win games consistently, you know, 58, 56, slow tempo kind of games. Jobe Awaka inside. That was way too easy. Awaka had great inside position. Both feet in the restricted area. He had some really productive minutes in Tennessee's last game against Austin P. Played 17 minutes but had 11 rebounds in that stretch. Ruffin with the floater. It ends up in traffic back into Ruffin's hands and he'll kick it up to Breakfield. It was a great read by Adu to bust that up. Three seconds on the shot clock. He's got to let it fly and he does right through the rim. I bet if we charted these two teams today, whichever team can find points in the last five seconds of a possession probably will dictate the winner because they're both so good defensively. McKinnis called for the foul. Take another look. Good late clock awareness by Breakfield. Just 31% from deep on the year. Shot that with confidence, though. When we talked about Breakfield and his numbers, I mean, he had 17 and 8 against Stanford. He had 17 and 7 against Siena. I'm not saying he has to have that every night, but he can't go for, you know, when you take a look at his last five games, he's been 0 11, 0 1, 9, kind of all over the map. Vescovy continues his hot shooting. Three for four tonight for Santiago Vescovy. Here's Miles Burns back over to Breakfield. Working on a walk up. Breakfield to the paint. Through the oh. double team, just bodying it up. How did he get that to go? Six points now for Jamin Breakfield. He had nine points in their loss to North Alabama before the holidays. Tennessee makes a concerted effort, no matter who's in, in with their bigs, to play inside out. Vescovy, the deep, deep three. Not afraid of it, can hit it, but doesn't hit that one. Ruffin hits Morell and stride, rolls out. Adu's got it. Theo Akuba limping up, slow to get up for Ole Miss, number 10 in white. See all the attention, though, that Morrell gets as a three-point threat. He had guys in orange jerseys just flying at him. Deshaun Ruffin whistled for his first foul. Here's Breakfield. Watch. He's trying to size up. Is there a double coming? It does not. So he goes all the way across the lane and gets the English to kind of get up over the rim. Ziegler at the line for Tennessee gets the first. You had Jamin Breakfield one season at Duke, made 22 appearances, and came over to Ole Miss, 25 starts last season. Average seven points per game. That's what he's at right now. Both drop in for Zakai Ziegler. What a luxury for Tennessee to bring him off the bench. He may end up being one of the best six men in this conference. Not only that, maybe one of the best six men in the country. Rick I know Martin his, certainly yeah, thinks so. Yeah, his head coach thinks so. <laughs> right now, Ole Miss is really good executing in the half court. Into the corner with Ruffin. Oh. Step back for Deshaun oh. Ruffin. Wow. That was juicy. It's going to be an offensive foul on Plopsic.
for Ole Miss. We talked about finding offense this time. The ball. Interesting, too, to hear John Calipari talk this week on his radio show about possibly downsizing the roster a right. little bit. Play four smalls yeah. around Oscar. Yeah. I, th- I think here's the thing I know about Kentucky's lineup. It's going to start with Oscar. Oh, yeah. And go from As there. As it should. <laughs> and remember, this is a Kentucky team that had to practice a month right before the season started without Oscar Shibway with that knee issue. So they're a little bit behind, I think, in terms of uh, of the process that every team has to go through. So that's our next game up in the triple header. Stay tuned for that one, Kentucky, Missouri. The most important thing, though, Mark, is Red Panda's going to be there. (laughs) (laughs) Nice change of pace that time by Ziegler which creates his own. Like a lot of great guards who have great quickness, he understands how to play at different speeds. You like him coming off the bench rather than starting? Well, here's the more important thing. I think he likes coming off the bench. Absolutely. And to be as productive as he is and knowing that he's going to get starters minutes, not starting, I don't think it's a problem. Second on the team in minutes, second on the team in assists and steals. Had 21 points in that heated game against Arizona. That's one of Tennessee's just two losses on the season. Also lost to Colorado. A few minutes with Abram as the point, the freshman. Yeah, he really had to step up when they went to the Orlando tournament. Deshaun Ruffin was still working back, and he thrived in those three games. Averaged about 20 points per game, the true freshman. There he is with the floater. Before that miss, Ole Miss had hit five of their last six shots. Plavcic way too far under the basket. Taken away by Morrell. Kick out to Abram for the transition three. Look early, look opposite. Good things will happen in transition. Kermit Davis was trying to find ways to get Amari Abram back to comfortable, back to how he was earlier in the season. He's averaged just 3.6 points per game in their last three games. Boy, he was so good at that ESPN invite, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Difference maker. They went 2-1 and one in that tournament. A little scuffle. Abram gets up. Zegel holding his shoulder. I thought he got fouled on the play. And Zegel's asking to be taken out. Meshack fighting traffic. It's going to stay with Tennessee. And Vescovy is going to come in to replace Ziegler. Holding that right shoulder. We'll keep an eye on him. Ole Miss is really good with their gap discipline in terms of cutting off driving lanes, not allowing Tennessee to beat them off the bounce. Remember, Tennessee leads the country in assists rate. And of their first five field goals, all five came with assists. Tennessee assists on about 70% of their made field goals. Vescovy in a hurry because of that shot clock. It's some help from Jonas Adu. Do you think Vescovy wants an assist on that yeah. play? <laughs> he attracted the defenders. He attracted the bigs. He's going to want one. Give it to him. Abram shakes Meshack. Ewan. Last touch by Tennessee. Julian did, Phillips got a hand on it. What did Rick Barnes tell you earlier before the game? This game is going to start when a shot is taken. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Because rebounding becomes <laughs> yeah. paramount for both teams. Both teams are really good on the offensive glass. Now, some of that is because they miss a lot of shots. You can't run run away. Deep shot, Amari Abram, his second of the night. He's up to six points. Morrell's getting the help that we talked about. Brakefield and Abram both contributing. Yeah, talking about this game, you felt like Ole Miss was going to have to rebound, and they've got to have somebody step up and help out Matthew Morrell. There's going to be a traveling call on Tennessee. I want to take you back to where Zakai Ziegler got banged up here. Watch, after he shoots, I mean, that's a foul. And then he lands kind of awkwardly on his right arm. So he came out of the game on that next play. Vescovy 
replacing him. Good backdoor action. Burns with the spin, got himself to the free throw line as you see Chad Newman, the trainer for Tennessee, checking out Ziegler. That's just good activity offensively by the home team. Miles Burns, who Kermit Davis told us has been his most pleasant surprise in terms of what he's giving the team, in terms of experience, a guy that really defends well. He's got over 385 career steals. And for a guy that came from the NAI level, he, he's made his own mark here. Well, Kermit told us, he said, look, uh, that's what we saw in recruiting. You don't always know if it's going to translate, but it has with Miles. A lot of guys trying to play up. See, this would be bonus. This would be something that Ole Miss has not been doing consistently, and that's free throw shooting. Burns just 56% on the free ones. Makes them both. And Ole Miss has a team shooting 67% from the free throw line. That's ninth in the conference. And we thought we'd see changing defenses. Ole Miss's man has been so good. Don't have to has change. It? Yeah, exactly. That's going to be forced to take the three. Ole Miss, meanwhile, offensively shooting 56% from the field. Akuba. Oh. Right over Kamwa. This is a confident offensive team right now. Look, Ole Miss went into the Christmas break. They were not happy after a loss to North Alabama. Playing much better oh. so far tonight. Adu rejected into a triple team. It's going to be a hell ball possession arrow. Courtney, to Tennessee. Courtney, there are blocks and then there are blocks. Yeah. And here's <laughs> one that's special. Akuba. That is what that is the definition of being a rim protector. Spent two seasons at Louisiana, was the Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Year. I think he probably has a bloody nose. Jemai Meshack goes to the table to check in as they take a look at Tyreek Key. Ziegler still working in the wings. Looks to be okay. Banged up that right arm moments ago. Lob it up to Julian Phillips. And the bucket in for Julian Phillips. They've been trying to work on his offense, but not focusing on it. Rick Barnes wants him to focus on his defense and let the offense come. But nonetheless, that's a good sign. Yeah. Because the freshman has really struggled in his last three, averaging less than six points a game. Ole Miss coming out playing tough defense, shooting pretty well on offense, almost 60% from a hot start for Ole Miss. Well, Tennessee is so good at guarding the arc. You have to remember that they've only allowed one team all season long to make more than six threes in a game. Colorado made eight. Ole Miss already has made four. Tennessee offensively shooting 47% from the field. Zakai Ziegler is back in after he tweaked his right shoulder. Phillips, the fadeaway, rattles out. Not a bad look, though. Again, inside-out approach. I I'm just impressed that Ole Miss is running their offense. They've kind of got Tennessee's defense on their heels right now. Morrell rejects the screen, swings it over to Abram. He already has two threes tonight. Miles Burns limping down the court after taking a hard hit. And Ziegler will pull things out. This might be Tennessee's best offensive lineup, one through four. Vescovy coming around. Three is out. Santiago Vescovy now one for four from behind the arc. And that's going to be a travel on Jemai, excuse me, Jamin Brakefield. Here's a look at Burns, who's a little gimpy. Sometimes players get caught trying to do too much off the bounce. My rule of thumb, ever how many dribbles you think you need, divide by two. Yeah. 
<laughs> Count it. Goaltending on Ole Miss. Yeah, I couldn't tell whether or not Akuba touched that ball or not, but he was close to it. But it's where Kamwa is catching the ball that's most important. He's almost got two feet in the paint every time he gets a look. Quick toss down the floor, and there's a blocking foul called on Kamwa. I like the attacking mentality, though. The defense goes down the floor. What does Ole Miss do? They attack with rough and quickly. Second foul on Kamwa, and he will come out replaced by Tobe Owaka. Morel just had it, trying to shoot over Owaka. Yeah, this is the best offensive start to a game that Ole Miss has had maybe this season. They've kind of been notorious for their slow starts. They have not done so here today. What's been the difference, you think? Making shots, man. Yeah. You got you to make <laughs> shots. All these coaches talk to me, we got to defend and rebound. No, you don't. Take a look at some of their tough starts this year at Memphis. UCF, they got down 21 to nothing. They just didn't score. They didn't allow Temple to score a lot of points either, but you know, nine points in 12 minutes, that won't get it done. They did come back and win that game. Courtney, doesn't it feel like the way Ole Miss has kind of dominated that maybe they should be up more? That Tennessee's kind of lucky to be down where they are right now? I mean, the momentum definitely is in Ole Miss's favor. Quick hands by Burns. You see Tennessee one for four from behind the arc. Ole Miss four for eight. And coming in, we had talked about how Ole Miss wasn't a team that got a bunch of points from the three-point line. Run out of time for Tennessee. Shot clock violation for the third time on the balls. Ole Miss almost seems like they have six or seven guys defending, doesn't it? Kermit Davis has to be thrilled with his team's performance on both ends of the floor. But with an older group like this, and I'm talking about an older group being Vescovy and even Ziegler as a sophomore, key out on the floor, no excuse to have shot clock violations. Six turnovers for Tennessee. Three of those have been shot clock violations and just an easy lane to the basket. That's way too easy with that high ball screen. Amari Abram bringing his offense back eight points. As we mentioned, it only averaged three over the last three games. Owaka going to the free throw line. Go back offensively. Here's the high ball screen. No gap discipline, same side. So Abram does the right thing. The left-hander just takes it all the way to the rim with his left. Finishes, easy points. And I, I would have to venture to say that Ole Miss has done a better job of finding easy points in this first half. Jamin Brakefield was called for his second foul. That puts Owaka at the free throw line. But Mari Abram is going to get a breather here. Eight points for him, you know, coming in a true freshman, the number 20 point guard, a four-star recruit. They love the pace that he plays with. He's a super competitive guy. Felt like he was a three-level scorer, too. It's got to be hard, though, when Deshaun Ruffin comes back. You're trying to figure out now right. what's my role. Yeah, it's, it's a constant process in terms of rotations, in terms of minutes. Who's playing with who? Now, this is an Ole Miss lineup that could be challenged to score. Because you got Allen off the bench, and now you've got Caldwell back in the game with his two fouls. And Caldwell started the game at the point. The only real offensive threat is right there. Two seconds. Burns elevates. Now that ball did hit the rim, but it wouldn't matter. Four turnovers now by Ole Miss. 
Kaminsky back to Phillips. Yeah, that's a foul on Matthew Morell. That's a bad foul once you get to the bonus. Going to put Vescovy to the line. And we talked about easy points. But here's how you can get some easy points. Get to the free throw line. That's Morell holding off the ball. Tennessee gets 22% of its points from the free throw line. That one rattles out for Vescovy. Talking about an 81% free throw shooter. Misses the front end. Robert Allen setting the screen for T.J. Caldwell. McKinnis! I just love McKinnis' activity, his motor, the way he's always around and active. If you want to be a great offensive rebounder, put the camera down and go get in the picture. That's what McKinnis does. Javius McKinnis, he's one of four active players with a 1,000 rebounds and a 1,000 points. Spent four seasons at Jackson State. He's one of those four senior transfers, Ole Miss with eight newcomers this season. And he was just four for 12 on the year at the line. Missed the second. I'm in mid-season form. Yeah. It's all you, Mark. <laughs> Here's the 1-3-1. One, one. First time we've seen it. A staple for Kermit Davis. It's a foul on Miles Burns. Don Daly saying he reached first. Take another look. Burns, does he reach with it? Yeah, right there. See the reach? Yeah, that's a good call. It's not a lot, but you've got to call those fouls. That'll be his first on Burns, and it puts Key at the free throw line for Tennessee. That's the first time you mentioned we saw the 1-3-1 one, one because yeah. Ole Miss's man has been pretty good. Well, this is Kermit's one, best 1-3-1 one, one lineup is probably not his best offensive lineup. So that may be why we haven't seen much of it. But Abram back on the floor at the point now gives them two scoring options in the backcourt. Here's Morrell. Back to Abram. Force back out of the paint. Ten seconds on the shot clock. McKenna's going high low with Allen. The kick out to Morrell. Bounces off the back of the iron. Excellent offense, though. That's, Ole Miss got exactly what they wanted. A little inside-out kick. Tennessee has not scored in almost three minutes. Vescovy trying to change it, and he does. And Ole Miss is going to call timeout. Vescovy, as good as anybody in this conference at moving. Points per 100 possessions. That's actually the best in the 22 years of Ken Palm history. Courtney, Ole Miss has been so good here in the first 16-plus minutes. I think this is a more important three-and-a-half minute to close the first half for Ole Miss than it is Tennessee. Well, Tennessee is on a 5-0 run. Ole Miss 0 for 3, all from 3. They've hit four long balls tonight. Morrell grabs it, waiting on the screen. Tennessee looks like they've picked up their intensity a little bit on Abram. the defensive side. Yeah, too much on the three from Amari Abram, who's got two from there. Tennessee with the three-guard lineup. That's an illegal screen. And that's on Tobe Awaka. That's his third foul, too. Rick Barnes has gone a little bit smaller with... Ziegler, Vescovy, and Key all on the floor at the same time. Do you like that move? Well, I think, again, coaches need to look at everything, I think, in the first half, and then you get into the locker room and evalu evaluate what adjustments you want to make. Well, this is largest lead today has been 10 points. Isolation. They've got a mismatch. Akuba comes out and gets it. Morell 
trying to feed quickly into Brakefield, and it's stolen away. I didn't like the angle of the pass. Gave the defender a nice, easy reach. Adu. We'll take that mid-range. Rebound by Burns. Early offense. Abram going in. Layup. Score before the defense can get set. He's looked confident tonight. That gives him 10 points. Maybe he thinks the game's in Orlando. If that's all he it takes, so let's go. Yes. Average 20 <laughs> points per game in those three in Orlando. 10 seconds for the Vols. Ziegler from deep. Minute 30 in the half. Ole Miss still shooting 50% from the field. First time Ole Miss looks a little stagnant offensively. They just had a hard time getting organized. Two seconds. They got to do it in a hurry. Short. Second chance. Got to get the offense started sooner. One minute. Off the front of the iron. It'll be Tennessee ball. 44.9 seconds left in the half. Ball should go two for one to close the half. Phillips to set the screen for Ziegler going the opposite way. Took too long to initiate. The kick out to Phillips. He just rotated into trouble. Ole Miss last shot opportunity. Ty Fagan with it for Ole Miss. He had a career-high 23 points against Tennessee last year. And Fagan turns it over. Nobody's going to get a shot off. But Ole Miss goes into the locker room with the lead. This is the first time all season that Tennessee failed at the half. Ole Miss, first time leading a top-10 opponent. Six from the field within, with getting a shot off in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock. Last time I checked, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> it's almost 100%. <laughs> Maybe has a similar feel to the meeting between these two teams last season. Ole Miss led at the break by single digits, and then the game went to overtime. Tennessee ended up winning that one by six. Remember, Tennessee closed a lot of minutes in the first half without Kamwa because of the two fouls. Look at the defense. So it's a different defense already. You can tell coming out of the locker room, they've already pushed Ole Miss further out on the floor than they did any point in time in the first 20. To make the Rebels work for it deep in the shot clock and the shot under the basket, no good. No reason to shoot that kind of a finger roll, if you will. Go up strong. Vescovy driving in, but turns it over. Javius McKinnis is there. And it's going to be a jump ball possession arrow to Tennessee. Isn't that, though, a Santiago Vescovy possession? Tried to create off the bounce. Almost turned it over, but is the first to the deck and gets rewarded on the loose ball. Phillips gets the start in the second half, too. The young freshman. And number two in orange for Tennessee. The 
spin by Kamwa, but rejected by Ole Miss. Look, Ole Miss, good defensive team, too. We saw it. Tennessee did not score in the last three minutes and 34 seconds of the first half. Morrell for three. Tennessee got messed up transition defense. That's a pretty good look for Morrell. Ole Miss has now messed its last six three-point attempts. They've hit four tonight. That one gets away from Plavchic. San Diego Vescovi into the stands on the other side of the floor. Take another look after the errant pass. Phillips goes to the deck to save it. No question, that's a morale foul. Push from behind. And that's the second on morale. You know, fans over the front row there. I'm never a fan of that. Nothing extra whistled, though. Second foul on Morrell. The kick out to Vescovi. And Tennessee with the offensive rebound. Julian Phillips. Again, be active as an offensive rebounder. You never know when the ball is going to bounce your way. And Tennessee's defense is going to force the turnover. Yeah, I just think there's a different effort going on right now for Tennessee out of the locker room. When the balls are in doubt, they go back to their bread and butter, and that's their defense. Defense does travel. You know, talking to Rick Barnes last night, playing hard is not a given. Yeah, you're not going to play if you don't play and if you don't if you don't play hard and you don't defend. And that's the quote he gave me last night. You seen Tennessee play harder in the second half so far? Yes, no question. More energy, more effort, more intensity, especially on the ball. Oh, Matthew Morrell just picked up his third foul. Ole Miss is led by as many as 10 tonight. Popcic with the inbounds. See if Tennessee runs their offense through Kamwa. Ziegler back up top to Key. Breakfield went up for it. And it's going to be Ole Miss ball. That three by Key just a little too deep, really. I mean, he's solid at, at the arc, 37% on the year, but he's pushed out a little further on the floor. Here's another way that I know that Rick Barnes wants more from his defense. They're going down the floor. They're denying. They're trying to change where the geography of this game is being played. Breakfield gets fouled by Kamwa. That'll that, be his third. Excuse me, Courtney. That's where you've got to know the value that you are to your team. I mean, Kamwa getting this foul is not good for his team. That's an easy call to make. Breakfield does the right thing, but that third foul, I think, is more important than giving up the deuce in that situation. Olivia Kamwa played just nine minutes in that first half, picked up those two fouls. And so he's going to have to come out again. Mayshack will replace him. Kamwa, their leading scorer, though, 11.8 points per game. Hard to be productive when you're walking with the head coach. Yeah. <laughs> Ziegler looking for options here with this Tennessee offense. Mayshack. And traveled. I think the reason Meshack got in trouble there is he didn't come to a two-foot jump stop. I thought one foot landed just before the other. Take another look. He took a little extra step there. It was the right idea. Get feet in the paint, find a teammate. Eight turnovers by Tennessee, seven by Ole Miss.
Caldwell going in and got himself to the free throw line. A little double stagger at the top of the key to get the offense initiated. Tennessee discipline in terms of not allowing the same side three coming from behind. Another easy call. Tennessee another foul at the rim. Foul was whistled on Tyreek Key, his first. That's back-to-back -back possessions, Courtney, where Ole Miss goes one of two at the line. Trying to get it inside to Plavchich. And it comes out in the hands of Ole Miss. Breakfield coughs it up to Ziegler. Ruffin did a nice job of slowing down Vescovy. Both teams need to slow down offensively just to count. Vescovy through the lane to the basket. If you allow Vescovy to get to his natural left hand, dynamite finisher at the rim. 12 points for Santiago Vescovi to lead Tennessee. They're going to wave off the basket as the foul happened before it. Zakai Ziegler whistled. You asked me in the first half what's so impressive about Tennessee's defense, their ability to guard the ball one-on-one. -on -one. Right now, Ole Miss is breaking Tennessee down off the bounce just enough to create havoc. You know, that was a concern for Kermit Davis was their ball security because of this Tennessee defense. That rough in corner three was tipped. Edu heads to the table waiting to check in for the balls. Ziegler off the screen. Saw the lane and sped up into the hands of Brakefield. Brakefield and McGinnis are doing a wonderful job. One affecting rim protection, the other cleaning up the glass. Not allowing Tennessee, who's so good on the offensive rebounding margin, to get there. Yeah, Tennessee's second in the nation in offensive rebounds per game. It's going to be an offensive foul on Ole Miss. Vescovy, the left-hander. When you allow him to go left, good things. We'll play Kentucky next, and then later tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, Alabama and Mississippi State. That game is actually sold out in the hump. That's going to be interesting. Here's the 1-3-1 back for Ole Miss and Kermit Davis because Alabama, they want that game to be in the 90s. Mississippi State will want that game in the 60s. Something has to give. So once the ball goes below the free throw line, the zone becomes a 2-3. Ziegler passes out of a double team. They're going to wave off the basket by Jonas Adu. Uh, on the weak side, Adu had done a nice job of getting inside a break field. Take another look. Ziegler got double. Break field behind gets called on the reach and not the finish. Trap works for Ole Miss, and it goes out of bounds off of Tennessee. Now Ziegler, as a small guard, he's got to stay off double teams in the baseline. Not a lot of good will happen there. Well, I hate it when you try to inbound the ball, and the offensive player's just standing there, like, holding his hand out. Get away, come back, cut, meet the pass. See, here's another problem, the handoff. Zakai Ziegler just wanted it more. And he'll get fouled going up. Foul by T.J. Caldwell is third. Talked about Tennessee having more intensity on their defense. Watch on the simple handoff at midcourt. Ziegler hangs around the double team, not only to get the steal, but gets himself to the free throw line in transition. Well, you've heard Rick Barnes say it time and time again, Zakai Ziegler just changes the game when right. he comes in for the better. 
Well, Kermit Davis has to roll the dice a little bit with Morrell coming back in. And Morrell in a bit of foul trouble. Three fouls on Matthew Morrell, their leading scorer, their leading three-point shooter. Also has the most assists on the team. Foul trouble for the Rebels right now. Ruffin, Caldwell, and Morrell. I just wonder, with Morrell in some foul difficulties, might we see Ole Miss zone a little bit? Burns in trouble to Ibram. Back to Burns. Over Adu. See, that's where the pressure defense dictated who shot and the quality of shot. Ole Miss takes it back. Pack it into the hands of Phillips. And it's going to stay with Tennessee. I thought that was the right call. I thought that ball went off Akuba's foot. Both teams kind of too many loose possessions. This looked like Phillips was going to be able to take it and score, but he just didn't gather it first. He's in too big of a hurry. Deshaun Ruffin is going to check in to replace Amari Abram. Remember, Ruffin has three fouls too. This is the game I thought we'd get. Points, hard to come by. Two really good defensive teams. That's a poor pass by Adu out of the double. 11th turnover by Tennessee. Miles burns by himself, followed his shot, knew it wasn't going to make it. It's the right play, but it's the wrong guy shooting. Burns just 2 of 23 from deep. Ziegler weaving through the paint. Sneaky move! Now, Fran Frischella calls that a Gretzky. I like that. <laughs> Dribble it underneath the rim, finish underneath the backboard, finish on the opposite side. Tied Game up. on. Tied up for the fourth time. It's a 6-0 run by the Vols. Morrell, back to Breakfield, steps into it, Swiss. What an answer. The fifth three-pointer tonight for Ole Miss. Meshack dumping it off to Adu. Breakfield from behind. Morrell loses it. Vescovi in stride! What an exchange. That's almost a five-point swing in one possession. All done by Vescovi. Three for seven from three for Vescovi. The lob up to a Cuba, and he's fouled. Take another look at Vescovi, who creates the steal with the quick hands on one end. Gets out, trails the play. Meshack does the right thing. Find his team's best and most consistent three-point shooter tonight. And Vescovi knocks down the three ball. Especially in rhythm, he's deadly. Yes. Early offense. Again, Tennessee was five for six within the first 10 seconds of the shot clock in that first half. It's when Ole Miss's defense forced them deep into the shot clock they had trouble. That one will bounce in wow. for Akuba. You would never get that bounce at the carnival. <laughs> no, the rim smashed it. <laughs> no, it just, you would never get that. Got them both. Got five for 11 at the line on the year. Knock them in with confidence. Don't tell him that. <laughs> Adu. Banks it in. What a great tough finish by Adu. Over the shot block. Tied up for the sixth time. and probing, and it goes over the top of the backboard. Well, 
step aside. Look at the back and forth we have here tied up once again in the second half. Tennessee and Ole Miss. In the first half and the second half so far is Tennessee's defensive intensity. Now can Ole Miss respond? Ole Miss in the first half shot 46% from the field here in the second half just 14%. Tennessee's outscored them 13 to 7 in the second half. Well, they've only taken seven shots in, t in eight minutes. Kamwa back on the floor with those three fouls. Rebound by Akuba. Abram back on the floor running the point. He was so good in the first half. A double figures for Abram coming off the bench in this game. Morell no on the three. Akuma with the help out. What a battle inside between Akuba and Adu. Look at the difference for Tennessee and Ole Miss from the first half to the second half. But on the Courtney Lyle train, I'm getting on that train. How quick did Tennessee attack in that oh, possession? Yeah. First 10 seconds, sometimes, do it. I think sometimes we get so complicated about this offense, that offense. Get the ball to the wing, get it inside quickly. They're seven of eight within the first 10 seconds of the shot clock. Talking about Tennessee. No look there for Morrell. And Morrell's a marked man in this game. I mean, if you're the leading scorer and you play Tennessee, they're not just gonna let you catch it and shoot. Watch out now, Tennessee's starting to find a little offensive rhythm. I think Kermit Davis senses the exact same thing. Tennessee with its first lead since the 1738 mark in the first half. Volunteers up by two, and Ole Miss wants to talk about it. Once. As a consequence, the Ole Miss offense has really struggled. Just two for ten here in the second frame. They almost had one of their best halves of the season to start this game. They were using that ball reversal, moving the ball around, getting the shot they wanted against Tennessee's defense. But as you said, the extra edge coming out of the locker room for the Volunteers. Rebound by Adu. Tennessee's hit four of its last five shots. That will stay with the balls. I love watching Kamwa off the ball work so hard for inside position. He came down, tried to rim run and, and get inside position, didn't have it, took himself out of the lane, repositioned himself. That's a, that's a great understanding for a big. How to post, how to repost. Vescovi elevates. 17. Ziegler wants it and he's got it. Scramble on the floor for the basketball. Possession arrow pointing to Ole Miss. Rick Barnes being prophetic, talking about what a difference Ziegler makes. Watch, Abram puts the ball in front of him. That's what led to this whole thing. But how about the dive by Ziegler? Not once, but twice. That's just want to. Uh, that's I want it just a little bit more than you do. And that's a consistent thing for Ziegler. And the officials rule to change of possession, so that's why there's 30 on the shot clock. Tennessee on a 6-0 run. Largest lead for the Vols. Abram trying to pivot around, Adu, it's hard to do. But again, Ziegler gets in, even amongst the bigs, to create a little havoc defensively. This is Sakai Ziegler, remember that SEC all-defensive team last season, he was 11th in the nation in steal percentage. See if they run it. Oh, what a nice job by Meshack. He's got the speed, draws the foul, got to the free throw line. I'm never a fan of the lob out toward the sideline on an out under. Take another look. It's not cleanly handed. Meshack with the challenge, the steal, tries to finish, gets fouled. Tennessee's defense speaking 
for their offense. Third foul called on Miles Burns. Sends Jemai Meshack to the free throw line. Just a 58% free throw shooter. Ruffin's going to come in and replace Amari Abram. Two for Meshack. Ruffin trying to get room on Ziegler. Elevates over him, and Deshaun Ruffin will get the bounce. It's a tough move but I like the fact that Ruffin played off two feet in the paint. Four points now for Deshaun Ruffin. Tennessee's hit its last three shots. Six seconds on the shot clock. Going back toward Vescovy. Pretty! Movement without the ball. How about Kamwa with the assist on the pocket pass? Puts Vescovy at 19 points to lead Tennessee. First time Tennessee scored under five seconds on the shot clock. Quite the battle, really. Ziegler and Ruffin. In a lot of ways, you have to remember, Ruffin only got to play 14 games a year ago. He's only played five this year. So in some ways, he's kind of at the end of his freshman year. Yeah, missed eight games last season with a fractured hand and then tore his ACL February 1st at LSU. Missed the first seven games of this season. Didn't return until December 3rd. Again, you just can't lob the ball inbounds against a Tennessee team that's kind of smelling blood in the water go away come back but don't just stand hold your hand up and go hey throw it to me oh here's the one three one second time we've seen it tonight Ole Miss hasn't used it much they started out in a man defense in the first half look at the ball movement for Tennessee and the slam by Jonas Adu. That pass to the slot area kind of breaks down the 1-3-1. One, one. The 1-3-1 one, one defense, a staple of Kermit Davis's defenses. Tennessee was expecting them to switch up their defense a lot. Caldwell back to Brakefield at the top of the key. Oh! Got it! How good has he been today? 13 points, four of six from the field. He's perfect from behind the arc, three of them. Ole Miss averages less than six made threes a game. Up ahead to Morrell. Brakefield got caught under the basket. Tennessee shakes it loose. Oh, I thought that was a good, quick, early push by Ole Miss. And Tennessee's going to call timeout. It's turned into a pretty big battle opening night of SEC play here in Oxford. Doing a lot more. Well, it not only, well last not year. only the 1 3 1, but a little 2 3 mixed yeah. up because they were so good in it a year ago, as you mentioned. And that meeting a year ago, Tennessee had to overcome a 12-point deficit, forced overtime, and then beat Ole Miss. Volunteers trailed for the first time this season at the half, but since then they've outscored Ole Miss in the second half, 24 to 14. Kamwa. He didn't catch that clean. Kick the ball back out and repost. Back to Akuba. 
rejected by Tennessee. Yeah, but that's one Akuba's got to make. A lot of traffic, a lot of bodies. Look the ball in. Ole Miss only shooting 25% from the field in the second half. Pass over the head of Adu into the hands of Ole Miss. You just can't have that high risk of a play with that much time on the shot clock. Both teams trading loose possessions. And we're in a two possession game, less than six minutes to go. Every possession now has added significance. Tennessee hasn't scored in two minutes and four seconds. Vescovi will come and get it. Already 19 points for Santiago Vescovi. An offensive foul. Such a wonderful job by Brakefield. Holding his ground since that Vescovi was going to go off one foot. Just slides over and takes the charge. Vescovi, one dribble too many. Too many, I'm sorry, Courtney, too many empty trips by both teams. Tennessee keeping the pressure on full court here. Morrell bringing it up against Meshack. Caldwell picks up his dribble back to Morrell. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Breakfield shaking the defender. Oh. Still perfect. He is four for four for three. The four threes tying his career high. Goes all the way around, but Adu has been so good on the cleanup. Second chance points, something Tennessee excels at. They average about 14 second chance points per game. 12 tonight. Again, Tennessee, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the nation. That's the fourth on Kamwa. Take another look at Brakefield. Here's the ball fake. Sell it. Get your feet set. Shoot it in rhythm with the seams. Good things happen. And the left-hander has been dynamite today. This is the third time this season that Brakefield is shooting 100% from three. Now, the other two were two for two from three. He just decided he was going to double that tonight, going four for four. Brakefield with 16 points to lead Ole Miss as Miles Burns is at the free throw line. You cannot simulate, as we take a look at some foul trouble for Tennessee, you cannot simulate in practice this kind of pressure at the free throw line. You must go through it. One of two for Burns. Ole Miss led by as many as 10 in the first half against Tennessee. With their shooting percentage has dropped. Meanwhile, Tennessee is shooting 55% from the field in the second half as Vescovi is fouled. And that's the fourth on Morrell. Yeah, it's a good challenge, but I thought Morrell, and he knew it as well, that he got the arm of Vescovi. I think it's pretty safe to say that when Kamwa was in the game, Tennessee played four or five minutes through him. Right now, the balls are playing through Vescovy. And Kamwa not an option at the moment with four fouls. Rick Barnes taking him to the bench. We're missing some foul trouble, too. Notice Kermit Davis staying with Morrell on the floor. But might he guard somebody other than Vescovy? Vescovi will drop in the second. Four minutes to play. 
Don't forget, still two more SEC games for you coming up. Kentucky, Missouri is next, followed by Alabama, Mississippi State here on the SEC Network. Opening night for the conference. Morrell, big time elevation. Tyreek, he flies in for it, and Burns is going to be whistled for the foul. Miles Burns with his fourth. Hard to win on the road once league play starts. One and one for Tyreek Key. Misses the first. Tennessee's defensive turn up in the second half made it really hard on Ole Miss. They're shooting 27% from the field in the second half. Adu is all about the glass right now. 11 rebounds for Jonas Adu, a new career high. He had 10 in their last game. He did not block that shot, but he certainly impacted that shot. I don't know about that quick trigger by Phillips. Adu with the offensive board, and Ziegler will set it up. Off the screen from Phillips, seven seconds for Ziegler. Got the open lane. Ball was actually deflected on the way up. Still went in. Ziegler almost stole it away from Ruffin. Tennessee trusting the freshman to slow down Brakefield. <laughs> and just as I say that, the freshman gets caught on the backside. That's really Phillips whistled for the foul. Brakefield has been the biggest offensive threat for Ole Miss tonight. 16 points, 4 of 4 from 3. Kamwa back in the game, comes in with four fouls for Tennessee. Breakfield at the free throw line. This will be a one and one for Breakfield. Got the first. You know, coming into this matchup, we had talked about how Jamin Breakfield, we needed that consistency if yeah. Ole Miss was going to have a chance. I think he's their X Factor guy. Yeah. They're, they're a different team when he plays well. Up it to 18 for Breakfield. Key back to Ziegler. Still time to work for Tennessee off the screen from Adu. Key deep rattles out. Quality trip defensively for Ole Miss. Ole Miss looking for their first field goal in almost three minutes. And Kermit Davis wants to call timeout. That possession was taking way too long to get started. Teams are just shooting 32% from the field against the Vols. Ole Miss, they started out hot. One right. point, most of the first half, they were over 50%, now just 38% for the game. Let's see if Ole Miss does a better job of inbounding the ball. Morrell will take the shot short. It's going to stay with Ole Miss. Morrell's taken some tough threes, but again, when you're the leading scorer on the team playing Tennessee, you're going to have to take some tough threes. This ball. Now, the Rebels have had a hard time getting a quality look last 10, 12 possessions. They've got to get something, I think, going to the rim. Here's our situation. One timeout for Ole Miss, two for Tennessee. Got to get the ball in first, though. They find Morell in the corner, almost the exact same spot. That one bounces out. Meshack up ahead to Kamwa. Stripped by Morell. Off of Ole Miss, it stays with Tennessee. Boy, the play Ole Miss ran was so creative on the out under to spring Morrell. That's the best look I think he's had the entire game. But it had a lot of misdirection. He was part of a screen, the screener. That's one Kermit Davis will live with.
key to inbound 27 seconds on the shot clock for Tennessee. Kamwa. Adu again. He's a rebounding machine tonight. 13 rebounds. 10 seconds. Isolation. Morrell with his four fouls. Ziegler gets blocked by Abram and then fouled on the second shot by Morrell, and that's his fifth. This is being the wrong place at the wrong time. Watch after the block on the Ziegler three ball. It gets tipped, and he reaches in and is on the arm of Ziegler. That's an unfortunate play for the Rebs off a great defensive stand. So Matthew Morrell, the leading scorer for Ole Miss, his day is done. Five points, one for 11 from the field. Shot clock started. Nobody had inbounded the ball. I thought they had considered the pass to the handoff to Caldwell the inbound. Yeah, so they're going to reset it to 110 on the clock. They'll try this again. There's an awkward little handoff yeah. between teammates there. Tennessee the thought he had stepped back out of bounds with it. Plenty of time, no need to panic on a three. Ole Miss has one timeout. <laughs> Ruffin? Unless you give Ruffin enough room. <laughs> Little balls at the shoe. Now, don't be surprised. Kermit Davis has been known to 1-3-1 in this situation. He has that kind of confidence in it, but I don't know that he's going to do that with Ruffin on the floor. Jonas Adu to inbound, gets it to Ziegler. They're trying to get Vescovy open. He's not there. And it's going to be an offensive foul on Kamwa on the screen. I thought Key went too fast. Kamwa was way too late to set the screen. Both things happened. Now the good news is Tennessee has actually gone accidentally. See, he's just late. He kind of leans in with his shoulder. But Tennessee has accidentally gone two for one here. That's the fifth on Kamwa. So he's done for the day. Is this fun or what? What an ending. Ruffin's going to take a three from almost the exact same spot. Do you like that shot? Well, again, he just made one, so I think you've got to live with that. I think Kermit Davis wanted him to drive a little bit. But you may not get a better look than that one. Kamwa has fouled out for the Volunteers. Matthew Morrell has fouled out for Ole Miss. Burns is face guarding Vescovy, trying to keep him from cutting to the ball. Key with the inbound to Ziegler. And there's the foul by Abram. Important thing there, 10th team foul, so this will be two shots. Burns did a nice job denying Vescovy, so the second option was Ziegler. Ziegler, who seems to play his best basketball against the best teams. He's seven for eight from the free throw line tonight.
still plenty of time. There's no reason for Ole Miss to force a three, in my opinion. If it comes about out of the offense, fine. Both go in for Zakai Ziegler. Tennessee's going to bring in Mayshack to replace Tyreek Key. Two possession game. Remember, Ole Miss out of timeouts. I think I'd let Abram go with it. They're going to drive. Vescovi's there. And it's going to be Tennessee ball. They call Abram for the foul. Abram tried to throw a bounce pass in traffic underneath the rim to a teammate. Take another look. He was trying to find Burns there on a slip cut. Just wasn't there. Now I don't think there's much choice for Ole Miss. Has to be a three regardless of what Vescovy does because even if he makes two, it's a two possession game. That's going to be now a new season high at 21 points. That's going to be gets them both. Now Ole Miss looking for the three. Yeah, got to be a three because you got to get it to a one possession game before you foul again. Ruffin with the ball in his hands. Driving in, saw a layup opportunity, and it drops. But it's still a two-possession game. Abram called for the over-the-back foul. And back to the line goes Tennessee. Yeah, we're in the same position, only now Ole Miss has lost eight seconds from 19 to 11. Still a two-possession game. Ole Miss controlled this game in the first half. They led by as many as 10 points, took a lead into the locker room. The first time this season that Tennessee has trailed at the half, but the defensive intensity for the Volunteers turned up in the second half, really slowed down Ole Miss's offense. I'm betting this is the guy Rick Barnes wants at the line. That's on you. I know, I know. <laughs> wow. Missed them both. Ty Fagan short on the three, and the ball goes out of bounds, just 1.3 seconds on the clock. An SEC opening night win for Tennessee, but the Volunteers, they were tested for sure. Well, it doesn't come easy in league play and on the road especially so, and you've got to win games like.